Hello everyone, Pally Time here. Welcome back to Total War Warhammer 3. This is the beginning of a new campaign for Belagar Ironhammer. However, I will not be alone. My very good friend Captain Shaq is going to be joining us as well. He's actually the guy that introduced me to this series and sparked this obsession that we've been following through with here on the channel. Some of you may be wondering, what about the Grimgore campaign? And trust me, we are going to follow that storyline through until Grimgore's last stand. Shaq is a super cool guy. He's great at telling stories, and I cannot wait to see this campaign unfold with him. Now, as far as what Belagar is all about, my main mission is going to be to retake my birthright. Carrick Eight Peaks, a dwarven fort that I was supposed to rule over, but unfortunately lost control of. I believe there's a faction of goblins that's trying to do exactly the same thing. And this time around, I know a lot more about the game, thanks to you guys. Shaq's going to be teaching me even more, but we're also going to try some diplomacy along the way. Maybe we can actually make friends in between me and Shaq carving out a place to live. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the series. The plan is to release these Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's the goal. We may not always meet it. I know we're traveling later in the year, but thank you guys for being here. I hope you enjoy it. Also, friendly reminder, 24-hour charity stream on twitch.tv slash mfpallytime, raising money to help sick kids at the Arnold Palmer Hospital in Orlando, Florida. We do this every year. This is our 13th year doing it, and I can't wait to see what the turnout is this time. Don't miss it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here, and welcome to Warhammer 3. Today is the day we're doing it. I'm joined with Mr. MF Pally Time. Hey, man. My name is Belgar Iron Hammer, and I answer to nothing else. Can I just call you Iron Hammer then? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you can, you can call me whatever you want. I'll answer to it. <laughs> We're finally starting the campaign. So I have a bit of a confession for my chat, and I'm going to tell you this too, because I know um, we've played a bit of Warhammer now that it's come out, but I've never finished a full campaign. Technically, in, neither have I, for the record. So this is the time. Either we're going to finish this, or we're going to... Die trying. Yeah, there you yes. go. Yes. <laughs> We're going to do it. We're going to do it. So today I'm playing as my favorite faction, Bretonia, and I'm playing as the lioness in the, well, the south coast of kind of close to where you're going to be. Yes, just a Google. small bit of water separates us. I'm playing as, you may have guessed it, Belagor, Belagar Iron Hammer. He starts with a big-ass shield. It's hopefully pretty defensive. Although, from what Shaq was telling me, dwarves in this game just seem to be super tanky, super stocky. And I'm excited to play it. They're not fast, but at least they're, like we were saying, deadly at short distances. Oh, man, I was looking at it. They're so well armored compared to my Bretonian peasants, but that's not what my Bretonians are all about. So I think we're going to be playing factions that are almost literally flipped on on comparably. I'm maneuverable and heavily armored when it comes to cavalry, and you have some of the best frontline infantry in the game. Can the dwarves and the Bretonians hold out? I guess we're going to find out. You ready to go? Ready. Let's go. Hey, Shaq, who's Caden? Caden is a jerk. Apparently, likes to be in my territory. So the lioness is on a crusade at the moment, and it looks like we're dealing with some vampires near us. Let me gather my paladin, Massif, which, by the way, I can't rename him because his, his name is literally the Massif. He's a giant paladin Bretonian who's when, friends of the lioness. When you say giant... I mean, like, he's not literally a giant. He's just a huge human. <laughs> yeah, okay. He's like seven feet tall or something. So, looking around my territory before I start a brawl with this vampire, it looks like... What is this faction? We've got uh, the vampire Count Stregos, or Caden, right next to me. He's got a couple pieces of territory in the province that I'm in. I've started with the city of Coffer. And is that an Imperial? Yeah, there's an Imperial south of me and some dwarves south of me. Is that the Baron? It is that is, the Imperial? Yeah, the the Baron Thegan is directly south of me. I don't know 
what he's up to. Dude. And then the Eye of Panther is what the um, the mining prospectors. The Dude, duels. the dwarf south of you is named Thick. How are we gonna beat that guy? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they're friends of yours. Are they? Do they like you? Oh, let me see. For the wisdom, come, come, kin. Um. Drink. Yeah, we seem pretty okay. They, they don't hate me. I can make a trade agreement right now with them, so that's a good sign. Oh, yeah, we're 20 friendly. Yeah, we're bros, dude. Oh, they like you. Nice. And my relationship isn't great with them, but it is improving. I wouldn't mind not being at war with the dwarves at the eye of the panther. So that's where I'm at. If we cross, by the way, the water area that, that we're between us is called the Pirate Coast. So if we zoom up past the Pirate Coast and past the city of Sartosa, this world's version of... Um, uh, like, uh, Tortuga. Where, what do you have going on up here? Well, I am parked right next to Rend, a uh, green skin that I think I'm going to run right over. From what I understand, dwarves don't get along with the green skins or elves. So I'm really looking forward to this playthrough. Um, I also seem to have four of my ancestors with me and they seem to be different uh, classes. I have a runesmith, a master engineer, and a couple of thanes here uh, in the area with me. Now, I will Are say, they dead? They, yeah, they're dead. Oh, yeah, they're my ancestors. You know, I'm just communing with them. I wonder how that plays out on the battlefield. I'm going to add yeah. my, my runesmith and my engineer to my group because okay. I'm very curious. One thing I think I didn't do well enough in my first campaign was scout the map early on. I just kind of stayed in my own bubble, so I'm actually kind of excited to start out with some extra dudes I can just start sending around. I'm just looking at your actual army here, um, armed with dwarven warriors, hammers. I like that they just got these gigantic hammers. Some miners and some rangers? You know what, Jack? Uh, we should get into a fight and get a closer look at them. Let's do it. Hey, come here, Ren. So one of the things in a little bit that we've played together, right, in, in other campaigns and, and with uh, other people we were trying it out on Twitch, what I've noticed in all those campaigns is that it seems like because we're allies, it literally changes how the campaign plays out. Because now you start out allied with a human. Oh, that is true. That is true. So anybody who likes humans or anybody who hates them, and that's going to affect our relationships and change how the whole campaign plays out. I love the variability in this. Like, if you take one faction out early in a campaign and then play the same thing again and leave them alone, they could thrive and take over everything. Yeah, later in the campaign, you yeah. find that they've taken over an entire continent. And yeah, oh, the stories that come out of it are super fun. Okay, I lined <laughs> everybody up for us. Yeah, how, what is, how do you attack a ghost? <laughs> are, are they just... How does a ghost... Heck you! Well, should, apparently uses his ghost rifle. Should uh, does do bullets pass through him? I don't understand the logistics here. I don't know. All right, here's but our first Lord look. Looks amazing. Yeah, here's our first look at Belagor. I love the runes in his beard. That looks so good. Uh, next to Belagor, I'm gonna bring up the information panel as well. We have the hammerers. They seem ready to fight. That hammer seems heavier than they are, and that's a compliment. Or is Probably it? taller, too. <laughs> it does look like it's taller. Uh, next to that, we have the dwarf warriors wielding an axe and shield. Captain Jack, that shield can mitigate damage from ranged missiles. Indeed. <laughs> Just be careful from behind. <laughs> Uh, after that, we have the miners. From what I understand, this is going to be our um, uh, one of our cheaper units. We just pulled these guys off of the workforce and gave them a job right away. Good against gates. Are they? Yeah, that's what it says. Good, And they're armor piercing. Those are legit. You can break gates down with your miners. Like they tunnel underneath them or something. And last, but maybe also least, <laughs> we have the rangers. Rangers are a little faster than the rest of my dwarves, but I want to stress very little, very little faster. Speed 33. They do have stock fast for a dwarf. I like that it says that in quotes. <laughs> <Fast> <laughs> but they get Vanguard dwarf. and they get stock. Stock means that they can be hidden like they're in trees 
even when they're nowhere near forest. Whoa! So you can use them to get them in the, into like sweet positions and then ambush people or, you know, put them right where you want there. And then since they have uh, Vanguard deployment, you can put them beyond the yellow line on the map. So you can get them very close to the enemy or farther away and along the flanks or even behind them. Is there any unit you would like to control in this army, Shank? Uh, you know what? Yeah, let me let me run the. Do you have a casting unit, or do you want to run the casters? Oh, I do have a caster. It's one of my ghost friends over here. He's uh uh the rune guy, I think. He can do rune of oath and steel. Rune of Wrath and Ruin causes fire damage in a large area. Whoa. What? And okay. a Rune of Speed. Why don't I give you the ghosts? You can be my ancestors. Yeah. I will play the ancestors in this battle. I'm down for this. I think this is going to be a pretty straightforward battle, but... Let, give me a second to set this up. Oh, the engineer gets the ability to uh, restock ammunition. He would be great alongside something like artillery or really good... Um, ranged units. I don't think you have much except for the rangers at the moment. So if I do, oh. a, this is this is strategy talk now. If I do a vanguard deployment there, they'd be pretty vulnerable if they're seen because the wolf riders could collapse mm -hmm. on them pretty fast. How stealthy do we think these guys actually are? That's a good question. I'm not sure how close like those wolf riders would need to get to see them. Um, but if we double timed it up there to give them some help, Bro, oh, that's some good high oh, ground that right spot. there. Look at that spot. I mean, they might be able to obliterate those goblin wolf riders because they are just goblins. Even there, though, on wolves. That's true. That's true. They are just goblins. They might be able to annihilate them before they ever get a chance to get close and then move up the rest of the army. Maybe hold up there. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Make so them come do, to like, us. Offensive line. All right. I can give you a speed buff. I have a ruin apparently for that. Is that an AOE? Uh, let's see. Minus. Speed plus armor. Explosions. Don't cast that one. Ah, there's 45% speed on a dwarf. Oh, man. Could you imagine that on cavalry? Um, that is a area. Yeah, augment. That is in his zone. So anyone near those, those, um, those heroes should get it, I believe. Though okay. they don't look like they use winds of magic, so I don't know where they get their power from. They draw it, dude, like an alchemist. <laughs> I don't know. I just made that up. It sounds cool, though. Sounds good, though, yeah. Okay, I am set. I'm ready. If you are, I'm going to try to... Let me paint. I'm going to try to um, push up and hold this choke and then have some cheaper units on this side holding that as well. I didn't even think about this side over here, but I don't even, I don't think they're going to move. This is if we lose it's because of this. <laughs> Why well, I have a feeling that you could probably send you over there, your your king and just hold that by himself. Just looking at him. All right, let's I'll see how this plays out. Sure. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. Okay, moving up to hold that. Mine is on the side. The speed. Oh, look at him raining oh, it down is an those AOE. arrows. Speed is cast on your front line, so it is an AOE around that unit. Wait, the wolf riders just went hidden? How did they do that? They just oh, reappeared. Oh, we probably lost. We lost sight of them because they we're get... on a hilltop. Ah, uh, they got too close to the hill. I yeah, see. so we lost that line of sight. They are coming up the hill though. Uh, we're gonna get there. I think a second too late, but I have boys on it. They're on it's the okay. way. Okay. They're also dwarves, so even if they do get close, I'm pretty sure your dwarves could take them. <laughs> your rangers could probably Should fight I tell them, them just to melee? as they are. Yeah, do hit it. Them, hit the hit the goblins. Smack them good. And they busted out these giant axes and started just hacking away. <laughs> oh, they're winning. <laughs> yeah, they're not charging their units at all, so that's actually really good for us. Uh, all right, I'm opening up. And I'm going to make your guys resistant to damage with entrenchment. Okay, our miners are flanking around the side. They're going to come up right behind these guys and hit them in the back. Meanwhile, Belagar Iron Hammer is in the thick of things now. What are his abilities? He has melee defense as well as base weapon damage. Let's just go ahead and use both of those right now. Looks like that might be an AoE as well. The Goblin Riders are running away in terror. And Belagar just locked eyes with Rend. He's moving in to attack the leader. 
Oh, that damage on those wolf riders. Bye. Half of, oh, they're rallying. They're coming right back. All right, let's try out the ru the ruin of what? Wraith and ruin. So this is going to be fire damage explosion right on their back line. Oh, I'm zoomed in on that. Do it. Do All it. Right, drop it in now. Do I don't know what it does. Oh, Whoa. my God. <laughs> Made a hole. <laughs> wow, that was cool. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, oh, so th they literally just have a timer. I can just keep casting stuff once wow, the timer runs out. That, that is cool. Super good. Forty-two so, seconds. I gotta be honest. My flank isn't going particularly well. Uh, the dwarf miners are arriving now. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe, you know, anything that relies on a lot of movement, we got to think that into the strategy. Yeah. <laughs> Might have oh, to make dude, some look at their little there. lanterns. And their helmet has a candle on it. Hey, the leader's <laughs> going to rally, or going to break pretty soon. I thought my lord was attacking him, but it turns out he was just standing on top of the hill, basking in the glory that was going on here. The only leadership in play is... The leader of the orcs and the miners are hitting the flank now. Let's turn off the UI and zoom in on that. You know, as a Bretonian, I don't really approve of this orc's uh, skulls on his back at the moment. Is he trying to run? Oh, he's not broken yet. If he's about he is, to. he's not going to get very far. There he goes. He's permanently broken. And the rest of the orcs are fleeing into the woods. Dude, that was good. Uh, this that is going to be fun. <laughs> Dude, this is going to be a good game. This is going to be good. Dude, you lost. Look at those. Look at those rangers, right? So those are your ranged guys. They lost like four dudes. <laughs> yeah, they did pretty good. Three. You lost three hey, on a full charge against Lycav. We pour one out for our fallen brother and may they come back as our ancestors in battle later. That's some necromancy bullshit right there. <laughs> No, it's just love persevering, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> Humans do it. It's necromancy and evil. The dwarves do it. It's fine. Look at the kill. 20 losses, dude. 20. <laughs> uh, they do still have a little health left. My options are to drink to victory. Your army will gain the following effects. Gorog for two turns. Income from all buildings in the local province increased by 10%. Growth plus 20 and control plus five. So by fighting back the orcs, we're rallying all of the dwarves in this area. I could also execute this guy getting some oath gold, which I believe I can use for some crafting. I didn't pick anything. It looks like it went for the execute. <laughs> okay. okay, he's dead now. No, it went with oh, the other so you've one. Got a, you've got, so there was a timer on it. Okay, I didn't see I, that might have been because I clicked something. Um, my bad, I didn't realize hitting the check mark would start. A, it did what I wanted it to do. I don't think I got okay. the oath gold, but I got uh, more buffs from my region, which is really nice. Can we see so your army you now? Sure, let's zoom over on uh, what's going on in, what is my region called? The coast of, all I see is AR in the map. I can't actually read the rest of it. The, co oh yeah. The co coast yep. of R. Yeah, it's kind of close to the pirate Hold coast. Hold on, I Why got not? you, I got you. It is called the coast of Arabi. Arabi to the south of the pirate coast. All right, so my army the Lady Lioness Repons is ready to attack these vampires. Let's do it. The lady is watching. <gasps> oh. oh, that's fine. Let's fight the battle. Does it I, just hit me. No, no, it looks okay. Um, I think we can take this. Though they are mostly peasants in my army. Uh, no, my oh no was the fact that I didn't choose a vow uh, for the lady or the paladin. So one of my unique mechanics is Every one of my leadership and my heroes gets to choose a vow that they have to accomplish and they get certain benefits and perks if they can manage to do it. Uh, I don't know what they are. I haven't read them yet, but they're like goals to try to achieve. Whoa, you start with so much artillery? Yeah, look at those in the back. So we'll look at them. Let's look at the artillery first. So those are straight up trebuchets i only get one piece of artillery through the whole campaign but there's this version and one that i'm really excited to unlock later which is just an upgraded version of this but what's i get four in a unit yeah nice i feel like that's gonna be really strong like they can shoot off a lot of rocks with that 
Yeah, we're gonna be lobbing rocks. Just ahead of them, and this is gonna be the bulk of my army is all peasantry. So if we click on the peasant archers, the peasant bowmen, um, they've got really good range, actually, 160, but they're also considered expendable. Oh, uh, does it say that? Yeah, so if you if you click Ooh. up, turn on the um, the info, it says expendable. This means that even if this entire squad and all of the squads around him are completely wiped out, it will not affect the overall morale of my army. They won't all like break and retreat because they're expendable. They're not nobles. Of course, why not? Of course. Um, if we keep going forward, you'll see the two heroes, the lady, there it is, the lioness, who is not a nobleman. She is a peasant who's grabbed a sword, stolen some armor and a war horse and has run off to defend her kingdom. Bro, and then next to her is what is this glowing Matt. blade the other dude has? Yeah, he's got a magic weapon because he is anti-infantry armor piercing and shielded. This is Massif, her paladin bodyguard, uh, which awesomely, um, yeah, he has like a magic weapon. He'll get stronger as he goes. And the lady has a cool ability that I'm looking forward to trying out. Halo of a Maidenly Wrath. She can blind all enemies around her. Doesn't affect friendlies. Oh. Yeah, that's going to be cool. The real, the real joy, though, if you look to the... Uh, right hand side of the army and I'll mark it is the cavalry I've got on both sides but looking at this group Knights of the realm so this is why I need to finish those quests because it lowers their upkeep uh, Knights of the realm they're shock cavalry they're shielded so they're defended against range weapons they're heavily armored and they have compared to the dwarves light speed 78 speed they're shielded as well I didn't know that yeah they've got their shields on the side so they're all about shock, hitting and doing a bunch of damage, breaking the enemy. The other ones, which are called the questing knights, they are two-hand sword-wielding knights that are on a quest for the grail and the lady. They're trying to find the grail. Uh, they're anti-infantry armor piercing. They can stick it out. They can sit in the battle for a while and just hack away at their enemies. All right, Chad, I just want to say for the record, I, look at, I looked at these in opposite order, but now you get the gist <laughs> of it. We've looked at them both now. There you go. <laughs> Pally, I would like to give oh. you command of the cavalry. I want a paladin. Give me the fire sword. You want the fire sword? Yeah, okay. I just want well, to go since... in with the fire sword. <laughs> All right. Well, I will give you the fire sword as long as you are willing to command the knights that go with him. Sure. I will give you these two. So, so the hit and run, right? Knights of the realm. Hit and run. So come in behind them. Uh, don't go after anybody who's anti-large, basically anybody with like a big sh um, stick in their hands. I actually don't know what they've got. We'll try to um, time this. Let me give this to you. So there you are. And Massif is now under your command. I'm ready. Thank you for this responsibility. I will not let you I, down. I believe in you. This is just one big open desert. Hey, let's and look at the enemy forest, real fast. It's all mountains. Yeah, let's take a look at what we got. Dude, they got spooky horses, bro. These guys, I know you don't play WoW. These guys look like they just rolled out of Naxxaramas. It's a floating... Are you looking at the Black Knights? Yeah, that's terrifying. And their oh, army is skeletons. Oh, they're they're literally like undead versions of my guys. Um, Wow. I wonder, if you click on the Knights of the Realm and you click these guys, does it say they're a good matchup? Does it show an icon? Can we beat these guys? Uh, if I click on the Knights of the Realm. Yeah, the ones that I gave you. And then what? And then and then if you look at the enemies, you will see a mark above their head, right? It'll be either a red exclamation point or a green uh, exclamation point. And that oh, kind of gives you an idea of whether or not they're kind of a good matchup. Okay. So the guys on the far flanks, um, specifically on their right-hand side, the wraiths <laughs> are a very bad matchup for me. Hold on, I'm gonna zoom in on them really oh fast. Oh god, the wraiths are messed up looking with the Bro, sights. Oh, hello? <laughs> what, is their, what is their deal? Causes terror. That's We have to keep those away from the infantry. Those peasants will not hold against anything that causes terror. Um, and they're ethereal. What does that mean? It's like the dwarves. They that ignore I had. most damage by non magical weapons. So that means the paladin might be able to do something, right? He's got a magic weapon. He does. He? The other. Uh, red triangle is going to be the grave guards with the great weapons and the spears, kind of middle left side of their army. 
<laughs> Nothing but the questing knights seem to be able to go after the grave guards on a one on one. So we're going to have to um, definitely going to have to work together. All right. What's our plan for the wraiths? How do I avoid that? <sighs> The Wraiths. Um, that's a good question. Well, I do have a group of... Mm, nope, they're bad at that. So, nope, they're bad at that too. No one is good against the Wraiths? Okay, Paladin, Paladin is good. Paladin is good. Paladin will solo the Wraiths. Okay, Paladin can solo the Wraiths, and so can... Well, I'll bring in the Questing Knights to give him a hand. And then if you can help me lock down, I guess, those Black Knights with the uh, Men in Arms Pullman, we might be able to get something done. Okay. Uh, and knock them out. Um, and then, of course, we've got the lioness herself who can fight anything. She's she's willing to go bring it on. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm actually not too sad about this formation. You like let it? them come to us. Yeah, let's let them come to us. We'll fight from here. I'm up on a tiny little bit of a hill. And we'll maneuver around them. Let's do it. Okay. See what they do. So I'm going to go in with you and the Paladin to fight those wraiths on the right-hand side. We're I say we do it now. early. Yep. Go Let's on. move in now. My other calves are holding position. The Lioness is going to work on those black knights if they try to engage. She's going to stop them all. I'm going to head over this hill. I'm hitting those wraiths head on right now. Going for it. We're charging behind you. Oh my god, what a shot. <laughs> Let's do this! Oh, they went flying! Oh they my got god! Shook. Okay, do I pull my guy out now and charge again? Um, You can keep swinging for a bit, and I will pull back. Alright, I'm gauging the Black Knights on the left-hand side. Archers! Start working on those Grave Guard. And the battle is met. Uh, my paladin is getting surrounded. He doesn't have any abilities to bolster him. I'm going to try to move him out. All right, let's move him out. We've also pulled them away from the fight, so let's get out of there. I'll come in from behind on those swordsmen in just a second. I'm you sitting my calves in. They have a great opportunity to clash with the skeleton warriors. Blinding the guard. The black knights, I mean. How are my archers doing? All right, squires, let's get in this fight. Uh, yeah, I, charge him. My paladin is completely surrounded. I cannot get him out. Right. We're going to keep circles hitting them then, and I'll see if I can break a hole for you. Okay. No, Massif is in there. Luckily, he's still kind of holding on. We do need to try to get him out of there if we can. Yeah, he's he's pushing out. Keep going, keep going. We'll keep do moving. a charge and do it. Here's the charge. Paladin of Bretonia. If we can get him out of there, it might be worthwhile. I'll start sending artillery your direction. How about that? <laughs> Let's see if we can break a hole. All right, I'm pulling back the questing knights again while you bring in your charge. I'm going to do em. another slam right now. Yeah, do it, do it, do it. These swordsmen are going to break. Nice. And then I'll come in for a charge as well. We'll just keep circle charging that. Artillery will be on your position in just a second. Paladin is almost free. The Paladin ladies is free. Just Paladin the... is free. The enemy knights are pretty much dead. Paladin's oh, out. All right, we're getting out of there. Are landing. <laughs> Pulling out the knights. Left side's knights, looking let's great. Go. Left side's looking real good. Yeah. And the bowmen. They're super crap at accuracy, but they seem to be getting work done. How uh, much if of you a run up bring... do I need to have a successful charge? Um, you need to, you need to get that speed up. So when you feel like you're going max speed, I think that's when you're pretty much good. Let's go in, hit the the left hand side, and then we can cycle back. That way I can get the um, maybe the arrows on target. Okay. They're breaking. I'm doing a big move. The enemy general is completely surrounded at the moment. It might not be a bad idea for me and you to get the lioness and the paladin on the enemy general. See if we can kill the necromancer that's raised them all. All right, paladin will stay. Roger. Uh, the enemy, all oh, the black knights are completely wiped out. Lioness is on the way to give you a hand. And the archers will help kill off those, ah, those wraiths maybe? No, nah, that's a terrible idea. They won't do any damage. General right, leadership in. is at half. He's not doing well. Looks like, sadly, a group of my um, spearmen are breaking. 
But we've just about killed the corpse, the corpse cart. So we'll have reinforcements in a second. Lioness, where are you? Where is their leader? Oh, he's deep in there. Oh, he's so weak. He just died. He's down? Nice. So what does and that mean if we falling? kill the necromancer? Yep. Oh. They all immediately, they all broke because the necromancer didn't have a connection to them anymore. <laughs> that was so they, fast. <laughs> so quick. You didn't even get the question out before they just crumbled. <laughs> I like how different our factions play. Yeah, I, that's going to take me a little while to get used to. Uh, uh, even with my, my green skin campaign I was playing, the uh, I don't really have that many calves in that army either. It's just kind of walk in and beat stuff up. So I have two choices. I can execute the captives, get some experience for the whole army, or I can ransom them back and get about 600 gold. But unlike the other factions, if I do ransom captives, that is an unchivalrous act and I will lose chivalry for it. Mm. Chivalry gives me certain benefits as it grows. It's on the top bar of my screen right now. So gotcha. as I gain more and more, and eventually I'll be able to use it to summon the legendary green knight. The legendary like a, green knight. Yeah. So I guess I get my own kind of ghost unit at some point. So for my region, I am at a very small settlement right now. My capital is Carrick Izor, and it is being held by the same faction who I'm about to attack here at this minor, minor settlement. Uh, there has been a new patch since uh, my playthrough. So I'm going to explain this really fast. Minor settlement battles are going to be less common unless the minor settlement has a defense built up like what I have here with the watch room. So I think these these structures are going to be even more important than they were before. Uh, let yeah, me level sure. this guy up. Uh, I'm going to spend a little money myself on picking up a rally field so I can get some shields uh, put out to the rest of my troops because right now they don't have any shield units. I'm going to upgrade your Rune of Wrath and Ruin, dude. Yes, that fire ability was cool. Jack, may I? I have a grudge. Yeah. I need to take down the target. Would this grudge be Carrick Boofdor? It would be. Which is just fun to say. Let's do it. It says it's going to be a close victory. <laughs> they underestimate me. Okay, this is our setup. We're going to have... Uh, rangers and miners on the right. The rangers okay. are going to move up. Miners are going to peel for them if they need it. Uh, the remainder of the army is going to head right down the middle, and we're not pulling any punches. All right. I like it. Aggressive. Oh, let me move the, uh, the ghosts. Um, then I will stick kind of right behind the line. Ready. Sounds great. Pour with the rifle and the ruins. Let me lock our formations here. I'm ready to go when you are. Good to go. Let's do it. Calls. Um, we do have goblin wolf forward. riders heading through the trees on the right side right now, heading right for my archers. I mean, your archers did some pretty good work against them last time. They just vanished in the tree line. Uh, okay, well, maybe not. Yeah, I might have the archers hold position here. The engineer with his one with his rifle is literally in range. Right now? Yeah. I mean, he would be. He can't see right now because there's a slight hill. But as soon as they come over that hill, those archers, he's going to start putting rounds into them. They don't even have a lord here. So once we start to win this battle a little bit, it's going to go fast. Can you hit that left side? I have um, I don't have as many units on the left flank at the moment. Yeah, I can go and focus on the left side. Sure. Oh, yeah. No, I see what you got going on. All right. Uh, the wolves have decided to join us. I will get over there and get the Ruin of Wrath. Oh, they're going on up those... so nicely for it, yeah. too. I'm going to hit the Spearman. You ready? I am so ready. Dropping the spell. Here it is. <laughs> oh, nice. I chunked both of them to half. Yeah, that's so good. How oh, often so can much. you do that? Uh, so the timer on that is 118 seconds. But I'll be able to cast another ruin, a different one, in uh, 40 seconds. Uh, I'm going to pull back some Axemen to hit these spear guys that are moving up towards my ancient ancestors. Uh, most of the front line has broken already. I'm going to send Belagar over to the left now. 
Uh, the hill has held just fine. Archers have a great position up top. They're just raining down arrows. This is looking pretty simplistic. And they thought this was going to be a close victory. Unbelievable. What are you thinking? Well, those goblins have actually pulled back, but they didn't break. They just decided to leave. You know, they probably made the right decision for themselves. And they're coming back. <laughs> I am starting to notice that if an enemy is running from me, it is very difficult to catch up to them. <laughs> We're still holding the left-hand side. Um, they're starting to move around us. I'll have 50 seconds on the next cast. If you want to bring in your dwarf warriors, I could use a little bit of help over here. Uh, I'll give the them ancients. a buff. I'm hitting. I'm hitting. We also have archers on the hill. They just got in range to help out with that. Oh, yeah. Immediately broke them. Those rangers are getting work done. I'm sending my rangers after their archers now, along with those axemen. We're just moving left downhill. Their calves are just clashing with me again. Wolf Riders hitting the back of my my dwarves. We're gonna have them turn around. I'm just seeing goblins fly in the air immediately. <laughs> Even from miners. Oh yeah, they're getting wrecked, those gobos. The goblins on the back of a wolf are still barely taller than your dwarves. Yeah, well, they're cheating. <laughs> 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 it's like wearing platform <laughs> shoes. You're not that tall. Just, what are you trying to do? Let me see what you're doing. 19 seconds on the cast. Oh, I want to cast this Wraith of Ruin before it's over. Come on, 15 seconds. Yes. So are you noticing the ancestors taking very much damage? Um, It looks like Ironbrow, which is the caster, did take a bit of damage, but they're both like ranged units, so... I did Whoa. notice that the enemy seems to break really fast when they're nearby, and I just looked, and both of your ancestors caused terror. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, they see a ghost, and they're like, nah. All right, I'm casting it. See if I can catch him. I'm doing it in front of the archers. Did I call it right? Oh, Maybe. I'm here. Come I'm on, looking. Come on. Come on. Yes. Oh, my God. That's just satisfying. That's just oh, good so fun satisfying. right there. In my head cannon, I imagine when the enemy is running away, I'm just slinging insults at their back the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Decisive victory. That's more like it. 13 dwarfs died today. And you know, this settlement looks great. I think I'm just gonna move right on in. Uh, oh, hold on. The rightful king. Your kin, entrenched deep within Carrick Hiran, have received word of your grit during the, ex the expansion. They hail the rightful king of the Eight Peaks and offer their loyalty and aid for your mission to reunite the everlasting realm. Yeah, come on in, boys. We're going to confederate that. No problem. Welcome aboard. Well, you got a confederate. Whoa, your territory just doubled. Did it? Yeah, you just took all of the mountains to the north. Oh, I did. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> the Black Mountain is now fully under your control. Whoa. Well, that was easy. Well, I mean, the when you, when you have decisive victories like that, can you really blame them? <laughs> <laughs> Well, now I have to take a piece of territory because I've only got that one village and you've like taken over an entire mountain range. You've got people bending the knee to you. You ready to take on a city of Phyrus along the coastline with me? That sounds excellent. I wonder what's stronger, a cursed undead wolf or a goblin riding a normal wolf? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this terrain. Wow, you're in a beautiful area. Fighting out in the desert. All right, what do we have here? Um, we're down the hill from them. I'm actually thinking we'll set up kind of defensively. We do have artillery, so we can make them come to us. So kind of set up in the highest point. Off to the right, I see that. Off to the right, yeah. And then kind of, we'll move, we'll march a little bit forward so that they're having to come up, the, like down this hill to get us. That'll give us a clear shot with our bows and archery. So maybe do something like Four trebuchets in the back. Archers. Once again, um, I'm going to give you the Knights of the Realm and Massif the Paladin. Okay. There you go. So again, your job, hammer and anvil. 
hit them hard, break them for us. We can only hold for so long, so we need those knights. My paladin is a little roughed up after that last battle, but I'll try to take good care of him. Okay, sounds good. I believe in you. Um, let me get my spearmen at arms moved over. So we know a little bit about these bats already, chat. These are my favorite units from when we were trying the five player campaign. These are all I controlled. They're not very good at uh, like, they're not very tanky, but what they do is they could just jump on an isolated target, slow them down, rip them apart. So we need to watch out for those. Yeah, keeping them busy, keeping the range, you know, the archers from firing because they've got bats in their face. It'd be a real pain. Or even slow down Cav and stop their charges. Uh, looks like the wolves are going to be off on the far left. Uh, I'm hoping that the artillery can really soften them up as they come in. Do you want me to run after them? Um, after who? The bats or the the, uh, the wolves? The wolves. I f I'm uh, favored against every unit here. Yeah, take your take your attacks of opportunity, whichever you think is is key. If the wolves get close and you can keep them from charging me, do it. Okay. Your your cavalry can definitely do a number to them. Uh, I'm gonna use the other cavalry, the questing knights, to just kind of be my um, keep them from flanking. You know, defend the the line. Okay. I'm gonna reorganize as soon as we start the battle. You good to go? Good to go. All right. You don't have to rush in if you want to wait until the the front line is engaged and then can I hammer the back end? That's fine. It's up to you. I believe in you. Right to us. The wolves are going wide. Artillery is firing into the yep. tree line. Do trees provide better cover versus missiles? They do, actually. So, but they can also make it hard to shoot out of. So if you don't want to put your artillery in trees, because you'll probably hit the tree in front of you. That makes sense. You got to be a bit careful with that. Uh, some, I think the wood elves, and I'm sure we'll see the comments about this. I'm actually really interested in how the comments are going to say. Um, do the wood elves, can they just shoot out of trees without any penalties? Because they're, you know, elves? That I would love to know. All right, yeah. artillery, give them the good news. They're not moving up too fast. Looks like the wolves are kind of moving up on the left side. Do you want to get your spearmen in position? Away? Yeah, I can start moving them over. Just following the rocks. Oh, crushed a couple of zombos. Uh, all right. I'm going to have the cat, the artillery focus on their command unit on the right. And let's get those spearmen ready. Ready to slow them down. Bring the lioness over. And I'm going to have, she's going to have the arch, archers fire, whatever they have opportunity on. Here we go. Wolves are about to clash. The lady's engaging too. We should be able to knock them out pretty quickly. Oh, they went deep, man. I didn't have a great angle. Crap. Uh, yeah, it's okay. If you need to push back, you can. I mean, you just broke them. Never em. mind. My <laughs> angle was just fine. <laughs> if, if fine. It's fine. <laughs> and it looks All like right. whoever else, the bats on the front line are just getting ripped apart. Right flank is going in under their command unit, which is just a bunch of summoned skeletons. Chunked them for a quarter of their entire unit force. And we're pulling back. Flanking around with the spearmen. Oh, the artillery. That is really close range. Uh, Blind them, lioness. A lot of the sword guys seem to be interested in my calves on the left side. I'm just kind of giving them the run around at the moment. I've got three units dedicated to chasing around my poor um, cavalry. So I'm just going to lead <laughs> yeah, them towards thing. the back. Same thing on my side. <laughs> we have over <laughs> half of their army preoccupied with horses. Oh, I see a good opportunity here. I'm going to zoom oh, in on it. it. I see it coming in. Ride, boys, ride. We must break them. This is how we win this fight. <laughs> Nice charge. Of Charging the middle. Sadly, our boys are a little surrounded on the left-hand side. I'm going to start getting the arrows flying over there. There's a charge on the left flank. Needs me. The We're going to hit these sword guys that are moving up. Roger, I'm pulling back. Oh, look at that charge. 
That should be pretty good. I'm gonna good go one. around. We've got a big group of swordsmen on that that leftern flank. I'm gonna I'm gonna get on it. Actually, moving up the squires in the middle right away. to flank around. Resting knights engage. They almost got a surround on me. Oh, the trebuchet is just chucking rocks into them. Oh, uh, this is looking like they're about to tip off the side at any moment. This is looking really good for us. Your command, Hugh of Heart. Questing Knights getting worked on. I think they're starting to crumble. Oh, yeah, they are. Oh, yeah, definitely. Decaying rapidly. So Dude, what was I, keeping them alive there? So in that one, um, they gave one unit, which was a group of skeletons, like the commander skeleton group. Oh, I see. So as soon as that one broke, which was pretty easy to kill, um, they started to crumble immediately. I like your army. That's fun. Oh, okay. I need more catapults in my life. 158 <laughs> kills. I want more. I wonder if they're so strong just because there's so many, like so many trebuchets that line up in a single squad. Four is a lot. Like Four if I was to make something artillery, it'd be one cannon. I Right. I don't think their accuracy is very good, but it's just like quantity, right? Mm -hmm. So if I had two of those, there would be eight of those suckers in the background just lobbing. <laughs> I need that. I need that in my life. All right. The city of Fire Us is now under my control, and that leaves one more, which is actually the region capital that needs to be taken. Um, I got an item out of that fight, which is a potion of healing. Nice. So I think the lioness <laughs> will now have ability to heal herself. Well, that seems excellent. Does yeah. that go away after you use it? Is it consumed? I, I think it's just you always have that potion on hand. Well, At least until you switch the item out. I think that was a pretty effective turn turn one. What what do you think? I think it was pretty good. I even got another level on uh, on both of my heroes. I'm gonna pop those in. I can't believe how armor? much how much territory I already have on t on turn one. I wonder I'm, if this will be difficult to defend. I'm a little jealous. I got one city. You got an entire mountain range in one turn. Well done. Hey, Probably. how do you feel about this play? You have a proposal. Yeah. What if I do a trade agreement with Valdmir Gassir, uh, the the Empire guy to my my east, the Southern Realms guy to my east? Okay. Although, uh, isn't this red? Uh, the the blue swords are also the Southern Empire, uh, Southern Realms. So I was kind of planning on attacking them. Or they probably uh, wouldn't like that. Yeah. They probably wouldn't like it. The blue sword guys are what? They're capitaled out of Miralangio? Something like that? Uh, I don't know, man. You could. You're going to be kind of stuck in that mountain range. Unless you can get some deals to let you pass through. <laughs> but you know what we do need to do? We need to have a trade agreement between the two of us. I wonder if we can. Oh, sure. You know, maybe. Send it over and I'll think about it. <sighs> Oh, we already have one. All right, it's already turned on. I thought we had to do it. Wait, wait what do you mean to think about it? <laughs> what? <laughs> we have an ancient alliance, all right? <laughs> well, that was oh, a good turn good. one, my dude. I'm pretty yeah, proud of that. that was good. All right. So next time, I need to capture the rest of my province. And we need to figure out a way to meet up and how to cross the sea. Well, I'm looking at a nice seafaring peninsula. I might be able to build something, something were to happen to it. <laughs> it would be a shit if some humans got in the way. I don't know what I would do. <laughs> <laughs>